Hi, in this video we're gonna see another circuit diagram. As you can see we're gonna discuss basically many tips and tricks on how to read and understand any laptop schematic. So if you understand just one schematic and how to read one schematic, you can understand and read any laptop schematics. You know why? Because the working principle is the same. So basically here we have in the first page, as you can see the project name and the index in the second page. And then we have the block diagram in the third page, the power procedure, the DC and charge circuit and so on. Okay? so. I'm going to show you the main important page for this schematic that you will need to understand how to read in a schematic. So let's see a little bit some terminology. Okay, here we have the block diagram. Okay, the power procedure, the DC and charge circuit. Basically here we have the charge circuit, the battery connector. So in page six, we're gonna find the battery connector circuit. Then plus 3 volts always and plus 5 volts always. So these two voltages are always present in the motherboard. As soon as you connect the power adapter, you will get these three voltages without powering on the, the laptop. So here we have 1.5 volt and 0.75 volt. This voltage basically is for the RAM or the random access memory. So if you focus here, you will find you will see that this voltage 0.75 volt is the half of 1.5 volt because basically for the RAM or the random access memory it has or it have two voltages one main voltage and another second voltage for VTT or for terminals so this is basically for the main voltage 1.5 volt and this is the VTT or voltage for terminals as you can see here we have plus VTT also in this page so for the ddr1 for example the main voltage is 2.5 volts and the vtt voltage is the half of 2.5 volt means 1.25 volt <coughs> for ddr2 the main voltage is 1.8 volt and the vtt is 1.9 volt or 0.9 volt and for ddr3 as we have here this is basically the voltages for ddr3 as you can see here we have ddr3 for this kind of motherboard so the main voltage is 1.5 volt and the vtt or the second voltage is 0.75 volt then in page 10 we have plus vcc core so so this this schematic basically i will put this schematic in the patreon page you can always find the patreon page link in the description box of this video or in the home page of my channel okay so if you if you want this schematic and more more other schematics for any laptop you will find it in my patreon page and of course in the patreon page you can ask me anything and i will i will respond to you and if you look for a schematic just go to patreon page post me the details of the schematic you want and i will upload the schematic for you of course if it is available because there is some there are some schematics that are not available in the internet and of course i have some free schematic and i buy others but for me even if i buy the schematics i can offer it for free for you just go to patreon page and i will give you a schematic for free either free schematics or p schematics so here in page 10 we have plus vcc core so the CPU basically needs a plus VCC core. This voltage can be can vary between 0.7 or 8 volts DC and 1.2 or 1 volt. Okay. Then we have VGA. 
fx core. This voltage basically is for the north branch and the graphic card. Okay. So we have 1.8 volt. Okay, we have another voltage. This basically is for all chipsets in the motherboard, including the graphic card, the north branch, the CPU, the ICH, etc. All chipsets in the motherboard. And then we have plus 5 volt, plus 3 volt, and plus 1.5 volt S. Okay, I will explain to you all this. So this tutorial basically can be divided into many videos maybe three or four videos because the schematic contain as you can see here 47 pages as you can see 47 pages we cannot cover all these pages in one video okay so here we have the clock generator okay this is basically this the, the ic that generate the clock or the timing for the whole motherboard you know why because without the timing and without clock the motherboard cannot work properly always for every motherboard it needs a synchronization it needs a timing between its component that's why we have here the clock generator you will find always this kind or usually this kind of clock generator next to the cpu because it is always connected directly to the cpu i will show you all this in the block diagram and then here, as you can see, we have the CPU, okay? So the CPU or the central processing unit. As you can see, the CPU for this laptop is in page 15, 16, until page 20. You know why? Because the CPU basically is a big chipset. So we will cover for the CPU the power section, the control section, the ground section, and all that the thermal section etc so that's why we have the cpu in about as you can see here six pages okay then we have here the thermal and fan okay the thermal and fan always for the fan okay the fan should be controllers that's why there is a sensor in the back of the cpu when the heat of the cpu increase the fan will speed the fan speed will increase in the same time and when the heat of the cpu decreases the fan speed also will decrease okay will be decreased here as you can see in page 22 and page 23 we will discuss the ram or the random access mode basic memory basically here we have the ddr3 the kind of ram here is ddr3 as as you know there is many types of ram there is ddr1 ddr2 ddr3 ddr4 and ddr5 ddr5 and others okay so as i told you before ddr3 has two voltages 1.5 volt and zero point 75 volts so and here we have the pch okay the pch or the ich so the pch basically is a chipset that controls all ports and connector in the motherboard so this is a very important uh, chipset in every motherboard so for example if you have a problem in many ports or connectors in the motherboard that is not working properly automatically you have the problem with this pch because the controllers of these connectors are gathered in the pch okay then here as you can see so for the pch as you can see we have pch in, in page 24 25 until page 32 as you can see and here we have the kpc or the keyboard controller this is basically an integrated circuit that controls the keyboard the bios and the power in the motherboard this is a very important ic that we gonna discuss so we have the keyboard and touchpad okay the crt connector lcm connector and hdmi connector or high definition media interface 
Okay, so these connectors basically are connected to the graphic card. In our case here, these connectors will be connected to the North Bridge because for this motherboard, the graphic card is integrated with the North Bridge. I'm going to show you all this in the next slides. Then we have the SATA HDD or the Serial ATA HDD. Basically, HDD means the hard disk drive. So there is HDD and SSD. Basically, SSD is an improved drive. Okay, so HDD stands for hard disk drive to store the data and the information, and SSD means solid state drive okay and over here we have odd odd means optical disk drive okay so here we have the lan for the network rg45 this is basically a connector that contains eight pins okay so we use this kind of connector to connect for example the pc or the laptop to the router or to share the connection okay so then in page 41 we have the card reader okay and then we have 42 we have the audio codec so the audio codec basically for the mic and the headphone there is an ic an important ic that controls the audio port so i will show you this ic in the next slides so if you have problem if you have, for example, a problem with the mic or the headphone or any ports, no data in it, means probably you have a problem with this IC. So then we have the HP jack and the mic jack, as I told you before. So these jacks are controlled by this IC, the audio codec IC. Then we have the USB 1 and USB 2. We have just here scroll. We have the wireless LAN, the Bluetooth here controls in page 45 we're gonna see all this then we have the usb3 the power button the peak button the HDD port in page 46 and page 47 this is just blank okay so we can discuss all this in the next slides so let's pass to the second page so here basically as you can see this is the block diagram for this laptop where we have as you can see this is the cpu okay this is the cpu basically so here the north bridge basically is integrated with the cpu you, you know why because we have here the ram as you can see connected to these chipsets means the north bridge is integrated here with the cpu because the RAM is controlled with by the North Bridge, not the processor. And since we have these two slots of RAM are connected to these chipsets, means the North Bridge is integrated with the CPU. Okay, and as you can see here, we have the PCH. Okay, we have the PCH. Basically, the PCH we have two chipsets inside it. We have the North, the graphic card and the ICH. Why? The graphic card because also these connectors, as you can see, the graphic connectors or ports are connected to these chipsets. HDMI connector, CRT connector, LCM connectors means what? Means we have the graphic card inside these chipsets. And also the ICH is inside these chipsets. Why? Because we have all connectors, other connectors, art ports are connected to these chipsets, including USB connectors, SATI ODD connector, SATI HDD connector, RG5 connector, LAN connector, card reader, the SPI ROM or the BIOS, the keyboard controller, and so on. Okay, so now here in this chipset we have the cpu and the node bridge and here in this chipset we have the graphic card and the ic head so guys this is how you can analyze and study any schematic just be smart it's easy
So here, as you can see, we have USB connector. So USB connector here, and here we have P44. Means you will find this connector in page 44. Okay. For example, here we have SPI ROM. This is the BIOS, the basic input output system. You will find it where in page 24. Okay. And here we have the keyboard controller in page 33, for example. The touchpad, you will find it where? In page 34. So let's go, for example, to page 34. We should find the touchpad and the keyboard connectors. So I can just type here, page 34. So let's type 34 and press enter. As you can see, we have the touchpad. LED, we have the touchpad module connector here, and we have the keyboard contro controller, 32 pin over here. Do you get me, guys? So let's go to the next page. The same for all other systems. So the block diagram, you will find just a rectangular like this in the block di diagram. So this is basically a general overview about what we are gonna see in the schematic and and of course what this laptop contain so those lines as you can see here means buses for example here this is the ram bus the ddr3 bus here we have for example dmi means the direct media interface so basically this bus connect between the north bridge and the ICH okay so it connect between the north bridge and the ICH and here we have the name of signals we have the HDMI high definition media interface VGA the video graphic as you can see LVDS the PCI as you can see etc so that's it guys for this video we're gonna pass to the tools page so in the next video, I'm going to discuss with you and to explain to you one of the most important page in every schematic, the power sequence. If you understand the power sequence of any laptop or any motherboard, you can easily troubleshoot, isolate and fix any failure in any motherboard. You know why? Because the power sequence gives you the secrets and the tips and the test point and where you should begin and where you should focus. For example, here we have the adapter. This is the Charles IC circuit. Okay, we have this MOSFET, for example. So here, for example, in this MOSFET, you should check whether you have here 19 volt or not. Okay, in the source of this MOSFET, we have the constant resistor so in the power sequence all tanks are very clear as you can see so here we will get here 19 volt or plus v but the main voltage 19 volt will be distributed to all circuit in the motherboard so you can just take a look to the power sequence and you will figure out how many circuits in this motherboard we have the first one of course, we have here the first one, the charge circuit. We have the second one, 5 volt, 3.3 volt circuit. The reference for this IC is TPS51125. We have the second circuit that generates 1.5 volt and 0.75 volt for the RAM. Its reference is TPS51218. We have the third circuit the fourth circuit, the fifth circuit, and so on. So, for example, if you want to look for, for example, in the motherboard, to look for the IC or the CPU IC that is responsible to generate plus VC sequence, as you can see, you can just go here to the power sequence and look for the reference of this IC, as you can see here, we have plus VCC core over here. We have the reference for the IC is TPE is 51, 
621. So you can just go to the motherboard, look for this reference, and that's it. You have the IC. So the power sequence is a very important schematic and system that every laptop or even a technician should understand by heart so and in the next video i'm going to explain to you from a to z this power sequence and if you understand just one power sequence and the working principle of how power sequence work you can understand any other power sequence of any motherboard or laptop whatever its type so thank you guys please don't forget to subscribe and to give a thumbs up to the video because this motivates me to upload more and more content thank you very much and if you need more helps and to be in touch with me directly go to my patreon page and i will be here Thank you very much.